Welcome back. It was a nostalgic feeling for most outgoing members of parliament who spoke to the news team on the last day of sitting of the Sith Parliament of the Fourth Republic. Whilst some say they will make a comeback in 2021, others say they will focus on their businesses. Some have been in the house for 12 years, others have just served only one term, but they have to make way for others to come. We have been speaking to some outgoing members of parliament and they have been telling us their experiences and what life will be for them after this place. MP for Lejekuku Benita Okitidua entered parliament in 2012. She will not serve her people again in the seventh parliament. We all would have loved to go to level 200 because within four years you can't know it all. But the little experience I've been, I've, I would say it's, it's been interesting. Do you have any intentions of coming back? My joy is to serve my people, so we're still thinking and hoping if it is God's way that I should come back, he'll make a way and I'll come back. The MP for Gomua Central, Rahel Lapo, also served four years. I'm a professional auditor, uh, so I'm going to um, do some audit work and accounting work. Outgoing MP for Ofuansi Eirebi, David Oponkusi, said he wanted to try something else in life, reason he decided not to contest again in the 2016 elections. Twelve years, I think I've had my share of parliament. So if I say I'm not going to miss parliament, it might be misconstrued to see that it is a bad thing. But I will have fond memories. I'm going on my own accord. I will, I will want to try my hands on something else. We are, we are not getting any younger. But we need to make our lives more exciting. And for me, variety is the spice of life. MP for Ablikuma North, Joe Apia, said it was a great experience being an MP. As a legislator for eight years, it's wonderful. And I thank God for that. And as we are editing, God is going to give us another job to do to help our country. Do you intend coming back as a parliamentarian? Oh, at the moment, I don't, well, I don't know, but uh, I feel I'm okay now. Parliament has taught me a lot. And... I'm going out, out with high esteem because I've worked hard. I'm a businessman, so at the moment I'll stick with my business and see what God will bring to me. MP for Ibrim, Esther Obing Dapa, having spent 12 years in Parliament, advised the new entrants to learn fast on the job. They should take their time and learn the parliamentary procedure. Just take your time because there's nothing shameful than getting up to say something and then the speaker will say you're out of order and people will laugh at you. You see, if you start like that, it will kill your spirit and you might never stand up again. Right. Uh, earlier, the Speaker of Parliament, Edward Doajaho, dissolved the Sith Parliament of the Fourth Republic uh, by 12.30. The Speaker had dissolved the House after urging uh, outgoing MPs to uphold themselves in dignity wherever they find themselves. Proceedings for the last sitting of the Sith Parliament began at about 11.45 a.m. Friday. After correction of votes and proceedings, the Speaker asked the minority and majority leaders to give their closing remarks for the Sith Parliament. The minority leader, Osei Chaymen Sabonsu, said members have survived the suspense, heated arguments, agreements and disagreements that characterized the Sith Parliament. He was, however, not satisfied with the alacrity in which some loans and international agreements were passed. He also expressed worry about the large number of MPs who lost their seats. This outrageously high attrition rate cannot facilitate the growth of parliament. It cannot proficiently grow our democracy. Neither can it adequately grow our parties. The political parties need to do serious introspection and reflect on their, ref their respective constitutions. The majority leader, Alban Sumana Bagbin, commended the House for their ability to balance party and national interest in the discharge of their duties. I know as a human institution, we may not have met all the expectations of every Ghanaian, but I have no doubt that on achievements, the scale will tilt in favor of this house. 
a lot has been achieved during this period. He lauded the speaker for making MPs proud and said history would be the better judge of his work. The speaker, Edward Do Ajaho, was grateful to all who supported him to deliver on his mandate. Throughout my parliamentary career, and in particular as speaker of this address house, I have been required by my duties and responsibilities to make several choices and decisions, some of which may have been pleasant and others hard. I wish to say that while not by any means laying claim to perfection, I have discharged my duties as speaker to the best of my ability. And the choices and decisions I made were neither detected by malice, ill will, nor self-interest, but rather well intended and made in utmost good faith. He urged MPs, particularly the outgoing ones, to uphold themselves in dignity as they leave Parliament. He then dissolved the House. This House, by the operation of Article 113 Clause 1 of the 1992 Constitution, now stands dissolved at 12 midnight. Thank you very much. So the right honourable speaker Edward Do Ajaho has dissolved parliament and currently we have members of parliament saying goodbye to each other. Of course, some of them will not be coming back in the seventh parliament. And so later midnight we will have the new entrance coming in and we'll have the election of the speaker as well as the swearing in of members of parliament for the seventh parliament of the fourth republic. Meanwhile, at midnight, the clerk of parliament, Emmanuel Ayimedu, would preside over sitting of the new legislature, Evelyn Tengma, TV3 News. And here in Accra, I'm Stephen NT. This is still the big one. Uh, we have in the studio uh, tonight David Agbe, who is uh, a governance uh, spec uh, executive director of the Ghana Institute of Governance and Security. David, how are you? Yes, I'm fine, Steve. Happy New Year is in order. Yes, Happy New now, Year. Now the new parliament is going, the new, uh, an old parliament is going, a new one is coming in. Uh, when you will look back at the performance of uh, the Sith parliament, what for you will be the uh, highlights of, uh, maybe I should put it, the, 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 the good, good highlights of the outgoing parliament? Considerably, I think that the highlights, you know, for parliamentarian, especially this year, has been um, some loans that they've actually approved, uh, which are going to benefit this country, especially the rural folks. Water, um, you know, the last one that I think they passed was the Damango one, if I could recall. Uh, I mean, basic necessities of life is something that every Ghanaian or every politician should actually you know look for his constituency so passing loans to build infrastructure passing loans to enhance our state architecture especially uh, universities you know uh, polytechnics hospitals hospitals you know schools are day, quite day very schools. good one mm. yes the legon one which was launched you know quite recently was monumental and some of the schools that the president actually commissioned you could realize that they are very good edifice. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, as we speak now, the benefits, we cannot quantify the benefit. But in future, maybe three years, four years down the line, we can actually measure the success of those you know, um, schools. For instance, three years down the line, maybe going through their exams will be able to measure whether their performance has been you know quite reasonable and better than mm -hmm. where they were and so those loans i think is, is good enough although people are calling for value for money which everybody could talk about but one thing we also need to understand that public policy is quite different from a corporate policy mm -hmm. and so we need to understand the state, the way state institution works as compared to the way private institution also work. So if you study public finance and you study 
corporate finance, you realize that it is a different ball game altogether. If you are quantifying a project, you need to be able to understand how public institutions so if I take understand decisions. You, if I understand you correctly, uh, all the uh, the allegations of overpriced contracts and some of these uh, contracts and loans went through parliament anyway you saying that it's quite okay because the private sector might have better value for money than than government i mean i can't get it steve uh, at times you see when people are comparing for instance some of the edifices maybe schools mtn will go and build a school mm. or a certain facility and you hear a parliamentarian somebody who should know better he will be using M uh, you know mtn as an example to say that oh mtn built a school and it cost 1.5 million why is it that government has also built same school and it has cost the nation 200 000. that or something you understand but it, that's that fair, is isn't where, it no that is where we need to understand how public policy mm -hmm. you know works public policy is said that once upon a time the money could not be available at a certain point mm. in time. So mm. prices of commodity will appreciate in value. Over As time. compared mm. to a private sector, they can have their money invest into that project once, and that is all. And they will make sure that the project is executed within a certain space of time. Mm. But when government is also building a project, it is a different thing altogether. There is a lot of consultation that needs to be done, acquisitions of those lands, prices of commodities will keep on appreciating. So when you study public policy Procurement and you are looking at and everything. all those stuff comes in. So public policy is a very crafty area that we all need to understand and then we'll be able to inform ourselves when we are doing comparison. Somebody mm. could say, oh, yes, when you go to private institutions, the way they manage their finance and all that, when you go to public sector, they don't do it like that. No, you realize that the person does not understand So how. you would say overall parliament did good. And, I think uh, that they it, approved quite a number of loans yes, which are beneficial yes, yes. to some this country in terms of infrastructure development. Some of us also criticized parliament mm. in terms of some of the bills that they passed. You recall that we were talking about petroleum exploration and production mm. bill, for instance. We criticized government heavily that they didn't do a good job because we are not actually getting the benefit of the oil, you know, discovery. I mean, we are getting less than 20% more. Mm. It is like, oh, taxes. We are getting taxes and that is enough for us. But that is... The, which, which brings into we, question the, the strength into of the, question, the, the, yes, the local exactly. content regime. So we, we've, we met Parliamentary Select Committee on Mines, on, uh, Mines and Energy almost about four or five times. We've been very critical on them. Anytime that they meet us, they said, these people, you own an allegiance to mm. your country and you are doing a good job. Mm. They wish that other civil society organizations could be championing like we were doing. We wrote almost about more than 50 letters to the office of the president. They were not responding to any because they thought that we were criticizing them the more. But we were telling them what is good for this country. We were actually telling them that, no, the oil, wherever oil has been discovered, that country tends to benefit more than the contractors. But here we are, Ghanaians are not you know, getting value for mm -hmm. money. They are not mm -hmm. getting enough of their mm -hmm. resources. That is why you hear some of the civil society going to uh, Takra, they going to mop people up, tell them the oil revenue has been mismanaged. And all those things are counted to the government, you know, losing mm -hmm. the elections. Mm -hmm. They so were not paying attention to, you know, people. They thought that they know it all. People became more like a thing god. They don't need any advice anymore. And, and, and so when you are, you know, into a public service, you need to pay attention to whatever comes onto the table. Whether it is good or bad, you need to read between the lines mm -hmm. and be able to see whether the person is actually contributing to knowledge or he is just criticizing mm -hmm. by criticizing, say. You know, we wrote a lot of letters, over 50 letters, mm -hmm. to the office of the president. They will not mind you. They will not write any letter. They will tell you, oh, go, I mean, they, they know what they are doing. So you could realize that the government actually was not paying attention to almost civil societies. They will not pay attention. They thought that civil societies are not part of governance. But we've gone beyond that stage. Every government all over the world, which is a democratic government, respects how civil society mm. you know, works. So, this election mm. that they lost, for instance, looked at the way MPP did. They had a lot of think tanks supporting MPP. Around the country, they were uh, NDC were accusing Mani Ghana, IEA, uh, whatever, Dankwa Institute, um, 
whichever, mention all of them. They know, they understand politics. But NDC, unfortunately, <laughs> it, it's, it's just like they are let, in a let, bathroom. Let's, let's, let's they go don't back. understand let's, how let's politics works, you mm. know, the way the world is evolving, how civil societies are, you know, making and influencing decision-making across the world. Let's go back to Parliament, David. Uh, the, the, the old ones are going, new ones are coming in. Uh, based on what you've said, the good and the bad of the last Parliament, what are your expectations of this one, especially under the chairmanship of uh, Professor Michael Quay? I think that this man is an authority and I was so happy when I heard the news that he was going to be the Speaker of Parliament. Don't forget he's a political scientist and he understands politics and he's a lawyer too by profession and then he's a, a reverend minister. So he has all kinds of components to be able to steer so the affairs of Parliament. To I'm expecting to him to exhibit house. some kind of good leadership qualities in Parliament that everybody will be able to respect him that the seat that uh, he is actually, um, you know, presiding over mm -hmm. meetings, presiding over committees, presiding over parliamentary business, he will be able to, you know, convince the world that he understands the political process right. more than any other person. Right, David, uh, thanks very much uh, for your time. David Agbe is Executive Director of the Ghana Institute of Governance and Security. And I'm Stephen Ente. This is still News at 10. We have more news for you. Please don't go away.